P we take this as H and we want to find I X and I Y So how do we do this one? When you look at the <coughs> actual definition again, you have Ix as y squared dA with an area integral. We got Iy as <coughs> area integral x squared dA. So for the first one, Okay, this is x, this is y. <coughs> you need a rectangular area. It should be parallel to the x-axis. Plus so this distance is y. It has a thickness of dy. So ix will be y squared. <coughs> dA in this case is going to be the width, which is b. You multiply this by dy and <coughs> your limit is going to go from 0 all the way up to the height which is h. So <coughs> what you have is you have an integration from 0 to h p y square dy. So <coughs> this will be the y square is going to give you y cube over 3 with the limit as h. So you get <coughs> BH cube over 3. So that's the inertia about the uh, x-axis. Now if I need the second one, this time I'm going to take a strip that's parallel to the <coughs> y-axis at a distance of x with the thickness as dx. Here I Y would be Y square um, X square then D A would be the total height which is H thickness is D X and <coughs> the limit is going to go from X going to go from 0 and X should go all the way up to B. So <coughs> x h comes out, you have x squared is x cubed over 3, so that will be h b cubed over 3, that's i y. So those are the equations for the i x and i y of the rectangular area. Now, <coughs> we need this over and over, so <coughs> let's look at this equation. I mean, what does this mean? <coughs> you have B. That's the length along the axis you're finding the inertia. So that's B, and then you have third of a Q on the height. So that's this equation. <coughs> Same thing here. H is the length about the axis you're finding the you know, <coughs> inertia, and B cube becomes the height. So, it's for a rectangle, the inertia always is the. <coughs> I mean, if you if you use one of the sides as the axis, then the length along the axis times the cube, or or the third of the cube, of the height. And that's the way you always you can remember this equation. And it, <coughs> it doesn't really matter. If I had a rectangle, let's say, again, x, y, let's say if I put a rectangle here. Still same dimensions, p and h. So instead of starting from the point O, we're starting this at certain distance from 
the axis. Even then, the Ix for this will be P h cubed over 3. I mean, it doesn't matter where this thing is located on x axis. As long as you choose x axis as one of the axes, the inertia remains the same. Okay, <coughs> you're going to stop here. Your new system problem will be two, one more problem before we get into that. And this example <coughs> is the same I did in last lecture. So <coughs> you're looking at the exact same problem where this was A, this was H, and the line at the top was y2 equals k x half and the line here was y1 and there was m x and the problem is to, I mean we did this is b uh, the problem we worked with was that we want to find Ix for the shaded area. I mean, I, I, mean I showed you when we did the Ix and Iy, but well, let's do the same thing again, but with a slightly different twist. Now, <coughs> let me redraw this over. First of all, this one here was changed, and it was P over a and X and this one was also changed and that really was uh, so yeah, B equals to K A one half so it will be B square root A square root X so just to bring both the equations within same parameters A and B now <coughs> So we're going to make it just a different approach here. And <coughs> before I said, if you want to find Ix, you need a rectangle which is parallel to the x-axis. But this time we're going to go exactly opposite. I'm going to take a rectangle which is perpendicular to x-axis and we're going to take this rectangle add a distance x and we'll have a thickness of dx. Now <coughs> this coordinate will be taken as x y1 this coordinate will be taken as x y2 then let's call this as A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, I want to write the moment inertia of this shaded area, or this hashed area about x axis. <coughs> so, what we have is so we have the inertia of this whole rectangle which we call this as A E F B. So we're looking at this entire rectangle <coughs> and we write the inertia of that about x axis and we subtract the inertia of this lower rectangle which will be A C D B and again that will be about x axis. So <coughs> since we will use just this rectangle and your shaded area is just some of these rectangles then <coughs> to find the I mean inertia of this about x axis all you'll be doing is you're taking inertia of this whole rectangle and you're subtracting inertia of this rectangle about the same axis x. 
and I'm going to call this as T i x. Then the i x should be simply an integration over T i x. Because I'll be saying that if you want the whole thing, you just take those small rectangles, <coughs> add them together, and that should give you the solution. Now, <coughs> this one should be, uh, <coughs> this is the height, so that's one third, and then you have dx, and then you have y2q. See, one third bhq, so it's one third, this is the same thing as b, and this thing is the same thing as h. Minus one third, you still have same dx, except the heights got changed, it became y1. So, <coughs> the actual inertia ix is an uh, integration of one third dx y2 cube minus y1 cube. So that's an alternate approach on finding the inertia ix. Now this is dx, you're going to go x from 0 and you will stop at x equals a. And this will be one third integration from 0 to a now y2 q, you come back here and you make a substitution, that will be p a 3 over 2 x 3 over 2 minus another integration which is b cube a cube x cube this times dx. So that's just the direct substitution. And I mean, if you go to the actual calculations, it's going to come out to be the exact same answer we had before, that is AB cube over 20. So, <coughs> this simply shows you a different way of finding more energies. <coughs>